how can you fully put all yourself into this relationship, even with it being toxic or whatever, when you don't even love yourself yet? I have so many things going on for myself and then like to have a baby, like it doesn't- I'm tired of building your dream. Let me build my own. You know what? Like, let me work on me. Like Welcome back, everybody, with another episode of Direct Discussions, a podcast dedicated to having direct discussions with people just like you. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my boy, David, to introduce our guest today. Welcome back, everybody. We have a special guest in the building. Pitzel is here with us today, and she is an entrepreneur, upcoming entrepreneur. So we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Hey, guys. So what was your main thing that got you want to be an entrepreneur? (laughs) <laughs> okay so ever since i've been a little girl i've always i don't know i've always wanted more for myself um i feel like the entrepreneur lifestyle started when i was the age of 23 23 also oh, it's it's pretty recent yeah okay yeah i feel like that's what that's where it really began honestly so um i had started a weight loss journey i had lost a lot of weight and during that time i feel like i fell in love with myself and through that process, um, I started sharing a lot of that journey on social media, mm-hmm. and that really pushed me to bring in clientele, and I just started, you know, making money off of <laughs> what I was doing. Entrepreneurship. So what was so, yeah. that? That you? What was the first endeavor into entrepreneurship at 23? So um, at that time, like I said, I was in the fitness, fitness industry. Um, that's when I began to grow a love of cooking Mm -hmm. so growing up in my family eating was like a really big part of like our lifestyle like growing up my dad the only thing he wanted from my mom was for her to just have food at (laughs) home once he came home like he would give us he would give my mom everything he would just ask like hey just make sure to have food when i come home Mm -hmm. so um you know in a latina in a latina household I would always have to help my mom out in the kitchen. (laughs) Yeah, and I would always have to help her. And that's where I began. I don't know. I started becoming creative. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess those interests grew once I started my weight loss journey because I had to become very creative and different recipes. And at that time in my life, all I wanted to do was lose weight. And at that time, like, I was just so, so, so happy. Like, I love fitness so much. I was very, very active and, um, you know, I started sharing like my recipes and one of my friends actually pushed me. She's like, Hey, like, why don't you just try like selling them? Like, just make them for me. And then I was like, nah, I don't think so. Like, it's just, this is not really (laughs) what I do. You know, like this is just for me. But from there, that's where, you know, I decided to give it a try. I started like making menus and from here, from there, three years later, here I am, like, I'm still I have my own um, meal prep page. It's called Meals by Itself. And, you know, I make healthy meal preps every single week. So that's where it started. Okay, so <laughs> what what inspired you to even want to get on that journey for weight loss and get in the gym and everything? Um, so how it started, I remember at that time in my life, I was actually, like, in, like, a not ha- happy place in my oh, no life. Place. Yeah. yeah um, and I just wanted to change so bad. Like, I remember, like... And also at that time in my life, I was like in a relationship that was not healthy at all. Like a toxic relationship. Yeah. And I just didn't know that it was unhealthy. And I remember at that time, like I literally like did not talk to any friends. Like at that time, like um, I wouldn't even really see my family. Like nobody really knew what was going on behind like mm-hmm. the scenes behind or anything. Doors. Yeah. So um, there was a po- there was a point in time where, you know, I was just like really, really like closed off from everything. And my mom told me, she's like, why don't you just come back home? Because at that time I was not living at my house. I was with, you know, this Mm -hmm. other person. So she was like, why don't you just come back home? Like you should just come back home, whatnot. She talked to me. So I was like, okay, whatever. Like I'll go ahead and give it a try. And um, since I didn't have any, I did have friends, but like I had like isolated myself so much. Like, you know, I didn't really have people to hang out with. So that's whenever I decided to just go to this little 
mm-hmm. Zumba plays near my mom's house, mm-hmm. and I fell in love with it. Like, at first, I, I would just go in and out real quick, and then from there, I don't know, I started, you know, forming friendships with different people, and I don't know, I just started loving how I felt. Um, I started to, like, lose the weight. Um, I was, like, the healthiest ever. Like, my hair was, like, really, 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 really pretty, and yeah, like, I feel like because of that and actually going through that, like actually loving myself, it just helped me like leave that part of my life behind. But I was just so used to, you know, this person helping me and mm-hmm. giving me everything. I didn't really know how to be by myself. Mm, that actually makes a lot of sense. So do you think that the doing the Zuma gave you the confidence to say, hey, I want to get out there again? Not just for like a relationship, but get out there for yourself to just do more active stuff out there and like just in general. Yeah, it really did because it, it gave me like so much confidence. Like it really pushed me to become this person that I never really saw that was there the whole time. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Like a lot of the times we go through different things in life and we just don't see what we're capable of doing until we actually and I think at that time in my life like I met the right people at the right time and it definitely pushed me to become a better person and yeah like I was able to you know close that chapter in my life even though it was hard it um and you know I it pushed me to like live on my own Mm -hmm. and yeah it wasn't easy at first but I feel like that's why I started like working so much because I wasn't used to you know, to have the access to be able to do it. So you were like, I might as well do it. Yeah. And then that's where I started to see like, OK, like, you know what? Because like growing up, like my parents, I mean, yeah, they they pretty much gave me everything or what was necessary. And then I I got with this person and they gave me everything, too. So it's like once that ended, it's like, OK, like, what do I do? So <laughs> I had to get it together, you know, um, I guess in the financial part and um yeah it just took on from there but I feel like once I was like living by myself that's when I understood the adult life and I'm like okay like it's going good with the meals but like I need to do something else Mm -hmm. so I can like really get out there more so after the meals what did you go into what was the next step so you were doing fitness did the meals and then what came after that um so I was doing the meals for a while and then after that, I would work, like, part-time as a nanny. But then I was like, you know what? Like, I need to, like, go back to school. I need to do something. So that's when I decided to take the tax courses. Mm-hmm. And it went well. Like, here I am today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Funny. So how long did it take for you to even get certified to do taxes? Um. So I took a course. So let's see. Let's see. Let me think about it. So I took the course about three years ago. It was actually very quick. How much did that cost? The okay, so this is like really, really crazy, but I'm gonna tell the truth. So um during that time in my life, um one of my meal prep clients actually told me, like, hey, like you should try out this course and um, you know, like just come try it out, see what you think. And at that time I was open, I'm I'm a very open minded person. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like I'll go check it out, see how it goes. And, um, since she brought me in, she told me, she's like, it's going to be this amount of money. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I paid her whatever. And I remember during that time in my life, like I was like struggling, like it was crazy. Cause I had just got in my apartment. So like, I didn't really know how the adult life was. So like, it was either like, okay, like I would pay my bills, but then I wouldn't have money to like invest into my meals. Mm. Like it would be like, okay, like I'll invest my money into the meals, but I didn't have money to eat. Mm. So I remember at that time, like my friend, she would like let me borrow money. It's right. crazy, but yeah, like that's so great though. That was like, like, three, like three. Yeah, she was really, I'm really thankful for her because if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would have like ever. Like, I don't think I would have ever left the relationship I was in because I was just so, like, attached. Mm-hmm. And um, and it wasn't even just any, like, relationship. Like, it's just crazy. Because I don't really like to talk about it, but it had, I mean, it's part of my life and stuff. But I was actually married to this person. Mm-hmm. So it was so really good. hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really hard to, like, walk away from that because of, like, the way I grew up and... You know, like you grow up and then you see your parents and then they tell you or you grow up with this mindset like, okay, like a marriage is supposed to last forever. Mm -hmm. But, 
you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Like, two people just, like, drift apart from each other, yeah, you know? they grow apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm really thankful for her because if it wasn't for her, I don't know, like, what would have, like, happened. Or I don't know if I would have, like, left. Or it would have taken me, like, longer. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, she was always there for me. But um, I feel like during that time in my life, that's what really pushed me. Like, okay, like, I need to go back to school. Like, I need to get it together. So, um, yeah, I was literally, like, nannying. I would, like, um, do my meals on the weekend. And then I was a waitress at this restaurant. So I was doing that. And then I went to go take the course. But anyways, once tax season started... Because when I took my course, it was really quick. Like, this course that I took, it was literally, like, last minute. It was, like, the last one that, like, the company where I work for now, like, that was the last one they were having at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to learn everything quickly. And um, at first I was nervous, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. I'm going to see how it goes. And it was kind of, it's kind of crazy, but the the lady who brought me in, at that time, I don't think, I don't know if she didn't know that I didn't have it in me to do it. But, like, when we would go to class and stuff, like, at first she would talk to me. But after a while, she wouldn't, like, once tax season started. But the good thing about me is that I've always been, like, anything that I do, I do it on social media. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've always had, like, like not, like, a huge following, but I've always had people who have supported me through mm -hmm. social media. So, once I started tax season, I mean, thank God, like, I had... My clientele like mm -hmm. my first year I did 60 files which was pretty good because like I'm basically a self-contractor so mm -hmm. I have to bring my own people in so this was really good because at that time I mean you know I had my part-time job I was still doing my meal preps and then I would do the taxes but anyways long story short um the girl started talking in the office you know tea time and whatnot and we basically figured out that my mentor the owner of the offices, she actually never charged for the class. Wow. So the girl that brought me in, she charged me, but oh. it was actually supposed to be free. Mm, so so she, she like made some extra money off of you. Yeah, and I never knew wow. about it. And then on top of that, like, because at that time, remember, like, I was just barely trying to get my life together. So mm -hmm. I didn't really have money, like, like to have, like, a laptop or anything mm -hmm. like that. Because, you know, I was just barely, like, so I remember at that time in my life, I would just use the computers there at work. I mean, they were there. Um, and she sold me a laptop, too, on top of that. But whatever. Like, I didn't really make a big deal about it because I was like, you know what? Like, I'm here to, like, I, I made back what I invested, mm -hmm. which I'm so thankful for. And at the end of the day, like, I really wasn't upset about it because it's like, okay, like, it's cool. Like, I feel like that's what pushed me more, mm -hmm. you know? But some of the girls were upset. Like, they went and told my mentor, but. I never said anything because I'm like, you know what? I don't really care. I don't really care about her. Like, I'm here to make my money yeah. and I'm trying to, like, level up in life and whatever she has going on that's on her. Okay, so I wanted to touch back on, you know, your whole meal prepping experience. So, yes, you started meal prepping because you started working out and then you were like, oh, maybe I should make some money off of this. But how in depth were you with meal prepping? I know, for example, some people are posting on their plate on Instagrams and all that. Oh, I sell plates. And then you look at the contents of their plates and it's like fried chicken, grease and all this stuff. And I mean, I've seen some of your plates, but did your the the quality of your plates evolve within the time from back then to now? Or are you still doing the plates? OK, so um, basically um, what was the whole idea behind my meal preps was healthy meal preps with a twist. So a lot of the times like, you know, like. A lot of the times you think healthy, you think like, okay, like it has to be chicken, like mm -hmm. greens, rice, or like you just think healthy and it's like a boring concept. And it shouldn't be like that. Like, you know, whenever you're trying to like lose weight um, or whatever it is that you're trying to do in your health journey, like you should always try to see the fun of it. Like that's everything in life, though, because a lot of the times it's just our mindset like, you know, like maybe it's like, oh, OK, like, uh, like I have to do this. I have to do that. But if you look at it in a different way or in a fun way, like, you know, it'll motivate you to do better. So um, that was my whole concept behind them. Like for me, like I remember when I was in my um, weight loss journey, it was really hard for me to let go of food. Like I had a really big relationship with food, even until this day, like I still stress eat. Like, and it's always been like that since I was a little girl. I've always, like, um, 
because of my genes. I'm half Mexican, half Salvadorian. So like, obviously I'm a curvy, I'm a curvy girl. Like I'm always going to be like that. Even when I was skinny, like I always had, like my body's always been like that. And that's something that I struggled a lot as a little girl. And I never understood that until now. It's like, you know, like food has a lot to do with, you know, who you are. And a lot of times some people may be skinny. Some people may be like in the middle. Some people may be like curvy, but you know, some people just don't have like a good relationship with their food because of what they went through when they were younger. Mm -hmm. So for me, like uh, when I was losing weight, it was really hard for me to let go of food. Like, Real. And like at that time, who might like at that time when I was like losing weight, my coach, she was really, really strict. And like, I remember when it was time for her to weigh me, I would get so scared. I'll be praying. I'll be like, damn, I better lose <laughs> one weight. Let me one pound or whatever. I'll be like, damn, like, I don't know what she's going to tell me. And then one day I opened up to her and I'm like, it's because it's really hard for me to let go of food. And she talked to me. She's like, well, you can't let like food be stronger than your mindset like you mm -hmm. have the power and she started talking to me and then like that's when I started to understand to have a good relationship with food so that was the whole thing with meals by itself like okay like I understand you know there's for example like bodybuilders or like other people in the fitness industry you know they're very very strict but because of what they want to accomplish or you know like the type of body that they want but if you're just starting off like you don't have to be like that like you don't have to like kill yourself either mm -hmm. or be like oh no I can't do this or that like and it's okay so that was my whole thing with that like healthy meal preps with the twist and um I don't know I just feel like I express myself like for example like one of my favorite dishes to cook is um the chipotle chicken alfredo pasta mm -hmm. like you know sweet. some <laughs> thank you sweet. I should have brought y'all some <laughs> but right now I'll be like on the go <laughs> but um yeah like it like, for example, those are meals that maybe you would see. I mean, they don't sell Chipotle Alfredo chicken pasta at Olive Garden, but they sell chicken Alfredo. So it's like little things like that, like dishes where, you know, you go out to eat. And, you know, a lot of the times, like, you go out to eat, it, it's considered fun, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, like, some people, like, because they're trying to stick to their goals, you know, going out to eat isn't fun to them. So why not make food that is delicious or it sounds delicious in the description and you know it motivates you to you don't have to just you don't have to restrict yourself too much you know so how much attention did you pay to the ingredients that you're using to make all these kind of foods because you know you did mention alfredo i know alfredo uses a lot of cream um most of the time they're using all-purpose white flour noodles to make all that so that's carb heavy as well not to mention, you know, if you're getting your chicken grilled or fried, that's added oil on there. And the reason I'm asking you this is because I do, I do meal prep. Like, I haven't meal prepped in a while because I've been tuned into something else. But, I'm like, I pay attention to macros a lot. Like, it's macro this, macro that, how many calories, all that. So, I just want to get your opinion on what did you use to supplement for, you know, because obviously the plates are to lose weight, right? Yeah. Well, um, you could lose weight. You could, like... Um gain muscle or if you want to maintain so basically what i would do is that instead of just using like regular pasta I would, I would use like whole wheat pasta the chicken i would just bake it instead of grilling it and then i would just add vegetables so you know like to something like that i'll probably add like spinach maybe tomatoes maybe some zucchini a little bit of like cheese and then the sauce i'll just try to make it as you know not as not as that as possible like a, the healthiest it could be you get me and um for example and now the, the reason why i say that you can lose gain or maintain, maintain is because of the portion size like i make sure to like measure all my portions and let's say if you're trying to gain weight well instead of just i mean you'll eat the meal and then you'll, you can have some protein or you know i have some clients that they'll eat two meal preps or whatever their day is like but um a lot of the times my clientele that come to me are clients who are busy. They're on the go or they just don't really eat food made at home. So because my food is made at home, like they'll lose weight or they'll like update me or whatever the case. Yeah. So do you, so I just want to make sure uh, I'm understanding this from a one to 10, how important are you paying attention to the macros and all the plates that you're making? Do you consult with your client and said, Hey, this is what this is my goal. Okay, this is what I should do. Or are you just kind of like eyeballing it to an extent because you've already been doing it for so long? 
Okay, so basically, um, what I do is that I just post my menu on my um, meal prep page, and then there's the different options. They all have the calories, the carbs, and then the clients will just choose their plates. They mix and match them. Now, if they tell me like, hey, my goal is this, um, I'll go ahead and kind of give them a suggestion. Like, And then I have different packages. So I have like a weight loss one. I think I have one that's called healthy and fit, one like to detox. There's just different packages that I have. So for example, the detox one, it'll have like overnight oats. It'll have like meal preps, but it'll also have like green juices. So let's say somebody that wants to intake more veggies. Okay, I'll recommend you that package. Um, with the healthy and fit, that one has like meal preps. It'll have like protein waffles and then I'll have like the overnight oats so um yeah and since I've been doing it for so long I already know how much of eat like what to put in each one but I do have clients who do tell me like hey I want extra protein so I'll add like extra chicken or steak or whatever it is that they want so where do you think the majority of your clients came from online marketing word of mouth or was it everybody who was following you when you were going through your weight loss journey um, I feel like basically social media and word of mouth, mm -hmm. I would say that recommendations, um, me posting my food, the reels. Um, so yeah. And then I just feel like, you know, people just, they taste like, cause for me, I love to cook. Like I really do because, um, even right now during tax season, I love what I do, but there's days where it gets really hectic. So sometimes I do look forward to Mondays cause that's when I cook. Because when I'm cooking, all these ideas come to my mind, all these creative ideas. And I just feel like a person who really loves what they're what they're doing and all these creative ideas start flowing is because you genuinely love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're in your like happy, you know, whatever energy you have, like that's why those are those ideas come. And, you know, at the end of the day, like also I always give back. Also, that's another thing. Like um, November, I had a. I don't know. I feel like the month of November, I always feel so grateful. And I don't know. I always like, I always love giving back. So this past um, November, I actually had like a giveaway. So like, I feel like my giveaways draw attention. The year before that, I had like this little gala. It was really cute. I had like this dinner and then I picked some girls to come and they were like dressed in like their dresses. And then we took pictures and I cooked for them. And then I did drinks and I don't know like I love that like I just feel like people like the people that are going to support you they're going to be there because they they I mean obviously they need your services but they so they support you for you because yeah. who you are as a person mm -hmm. like people know like a uh, like your intentions your soul and you know um yeah they're always going to come back even if you may I've made mistakes mm -hmm. you know but I always try to like make it better uh, or like I'll offer them like a discount or, hey, I'm so sorry about the X, Y, and Z. Like, what can I do to make it better? So I just feel like it's also your customer service skills also. One more question before I pass it over to David. Do you see yourself growing into your meal prep um, goals into, let's say, for example, you start hiring more help? Or is that something you just want to keep to yourself as far as cooking because you have more control of your image as far as it you know, being... Oh, I make these plates, you know, these are plates made by me and instead of saying, oh, yeah, you can come order from me off my website. And then it's like, OK, who made the food? And then you, I think the only thing about that would probably be that you lack the quality control unless you're there keeping an eye on that person or you trust that person to help you. So uh, just to uh, reiterate the question, do you see yourself growing that meal prepping plan service into a bigger possibility where i mean it can be as big as you know freshly and all that but is that a goal that you have in mind for the next five years in relating to your meal prepping or do you just want to focus more on taxes and being a jack of all trades of sorts so to answer your question i actually i've been able to have someone help me like i i'm at the position now where i actually have two people help me my brother helps me and uh, my um, ex-roommate, she helps me too. She comes every single week. Um, I'm really thankful for them because right now, this is like my third year doing taxes. Um, I definitely see the growth. Um, I'm already at 150 files right now. And that's just, mind you, that's like me bringing in like my own clientele. And it's been a very, very hard for me to juggle both, um, especially because I'm just one person. So I definitely do see that I need help. 
And um, if it wasn't for my team right now, I don't know what I would do. Um, last year, too, like, I already had – I, like, last year I had help, too. Like, I had um, friends help me. And, um, like, sometimes as a business owner, you just have to make certain decisions because, yeah, like, you – like, I'm a very caring, caring person, but when it comes to, like, you know, my money and my business, I have to make sure, like, that I have people who I can rely on. Mm -hmm. So because of that, um, you know, I, the one person that's always been there for me has been my roommate, and I'm very, very thankful because she knows exactly what it is that I need as far as, like, my recipes or, let's say, um, she knows how to cook, too, and she loves being in the kitchen. So that's something that I love on her behalf because... Uh, she gives me ideas and, you know, as a business person, you always have to be open to new ideas. It's just not, it's not just what you think. You have to be open to what other people, you know, bring to the table. And she's a very fast worker and I'm really thankful for her because if it wasn't for her, I don't know what I would do. For my brother, what I love about him is that he, he now goes to the store for me. Like, I don't have to worry about that. I'm like, hey, this is the list. Like, make sure to bring X, Y, and Z and then I'll see you here at my house. Like, both of them have keys to my house. They already know what to do to set up. Um, so, yeah. Um, and that's my baby. Like, I have so much love. Like, that's how I see it. I don't know if you guys that's see y'all's business mm -hmm. as that, like, as a baby. But, like, you want to see it grow. You know, you want to see, like, what fruits is going to, like, it's are going to come from it. So, definitely, yes, I want to keep allowing it to grow. And I just want to keep pouring into it. I haven't given it as much love as I, I should right now. But it's because... Um, you know, I do know that with, you know, during tax season, that's something that is, um, going to help me more financially. So right now I'm like putting in so much work, so I'll be good financially. So that way, whatever other goals I have for myself this year, like I'll be able to focus on them and I can still make income from my meals. I don't have to have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. I'll be good from just that. So to answer your question, yes, I wanted to keep growing because I don't, I don't see, I haven't worked a nine to five since, well, I, this is my first year actually not working a nine to five, like not nanny, waitressing, nothing. It's just strictly like, you know, 100% just me, like me working, like my businesses. And that's so hard to do. Quit yeah. the nine to five and go full in on what you want to do in life and say, I'm tired of building your dream. Let me build my own. That's so hard to do to have the confidence and the awareness to say <clears throat> that I would. That's what I'm trying to choose myself over you, and that that takes a lot, of, a lot, a lot to take in to do. So I wanted to ask you, what is the most fulfilling thing about doing the meals for you? For me, it just makes me so happy. Like when I'm cooking, I just get so happy. Like I'll be singing to myself, or like I'll just be vibing, or like. People try my, because I literally take my time making my, like, my menus. Like, so I, you put love. You yeah, put like, I'll love think, like, I'll be like, okay, I'm like, last week I did X, Y, and Z. Like, what am I going to do this year? I mean, this year, <laughs> this week. So that way it could be different. Because they already ate tilapia with Cajun mashed potatoes and vegetables. Like, what else can I make that's different? And I think about different, you know, different ideas or, like, food that I think would go good together and then I don't know like when people tell me like hey like I like this option or whatever like it makes me so happy because I'm like what like I created this like I mean yeah like you know I made it up like I you know I put my ideas together and then you're telling me that it's good so it makes me happy the reassurance is what you like yeah so did you have a, uh did you want to touch on taxes a little bit I wanted to ask a question but I'll let you go ahead first okay so Two questions. The first one, tax season is what, like, beginning of January to about April, right? So what do you do after that as far as, you know, working in taxes? Is the building still open or you're still bringing in clients for other services or is it just, you know, come in, buy all your taxes and then get out? Okay. So basically, yes, tax season is from January to April. However, um, the last day to file, April 15th, is actually for people who are owing to the IRS. So in this case, it's self-contractors, or let's say you're someone who has a W-2, and for some reason you're owing back. Um, so basically, the last day is for you to pay that amount that you're owing, right? But on April 15th, you're actually able to file an extension. 
So if you file an extension, that gives you time until November. I forgot what day exactly, but you basically have time to go ahead and pay back and you don't have to, you know, worry about being penalized. So a lot of the times, like, and me including, because before I ever even did taxes, I had no idea that, you know, April 15th was not the last day. So, um, yeah, so after tax season, I still have people who, you know, they need to file. Um, or I have people who... Um, who are I-10 holders. So basically an I-10 holder is actually someone who, you know, does not have a social, but they need some kind of, you know, identification to go ahead and file their taxes. Um, so you have, you actually have to apply for that. Um, and I-10 will help you in the future if you're wanting to buy a home, if you want to go ahead and, you know, open an account, uh, you know, to apply for a credit card, bank account, or um, I Get think, a car. yeah, a car, um, so, uh, you do have to apply for that. You do have to certain, send certain paperwork in and whatnot. So a lot, I do get some I-10 holders and this year the company actually hired someone who does insurance. So, um, the goal is for it to be open like all year long. So that way, um, you know, we can provide different services and, um, yeah, so that's the goal. And then also we do have our, um, our group trainings or, you know, trainings for people who are interested in starting you know their tax journeys so we normally start that in september interesting so okay so my next question and when i say you i don't mean you directly i mean you as a as an a tax professional every time i'm on the internet and i'm like scrolling through this and that and i'm like okay this person tax person i can get you the biggest refund ever you know, I mean, I get that's to bring in clients, but what is your opinion on those people? And if this is actually happening where people are messing up people's taxes on purposes to get them a bigger a refund. Oh, OK, OK, I see. You, you, you know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes you got people saying, oh, I can get you twelve hundred twelve thousand dollars. And it's like and in my mind, I'm like, like, I do my own taxes. So, you know, I know how to file my own taxes. I do. My sisters, my moms, and, you know, my girlfriends, and, you know, I take care of a couple. So, I'm kind of aware of it. So, I would like for you to shed some light on that situation there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, So, basically, when it comes to refunds, this is the thing. Like, just know that everybody qualifies for different amounts. Like, somebody who's single is not going to get a refund of someone that has dependents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have a certain amount of, um, they're making a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, I've had clients, and the thing is, is that um, the way I do things as a tax preparer, I try to be as transparent as possible, and I always like to educate my clients, and then I walk them through every single thing that I do on their file, and I also let them know, like, hey, we have to do X, Y, and Z because of this. Is this something that you would like to do? Is this, is this something that you're interested in? Any clients who want to do, like, if they want to write off expenses, I tell them, like, hey, you need to make sure that you have all the proof of these things in case if an audit were to happen. And then I tell them, I'm like, I'm not telling, I'm not bringing up the audit to scare you or, you know, make you feel some kind of way. I just want to make sure that you know that this is something that could happen at any time and you need to be prepared. Like, you need to make sure you have your receipts. Like, I'm very stern on that. Or if we do go ahead and add expenses for the 1099 contractors or if they um whatever the case whatever the case is i let them know like hey i don't think that we should add any more because you know we don't want any red flags like you know if you receive a letter like i don't want for there to be any issues so the thing is is that yes maybe someone that's receiving like for example someone that's somebody that has three dependents they have a certain amount of money coming in you know they're in the the 20k bracket of course they're gonna have they're gonna make like 10k or they're gonna have a 10k refund right mm -hmm. but someone who produces 80 80k and then they have three kids they're not gonna have the same amount they're not gonna have a 10k refund mm -hmm. why because they're making more they're in a higher tax bracket yeah so it's just it, it it all comes down to like you know is the person who the taxpayer are they being honest are they letting you know what credits you're qualifying for and for why you're earning that amount of refund so that's the thing like me i will take my time i will literally call my clients on the phone i will send voice messages like you know like i mean i don't want to say best friend but i want us to have like a good relationship mm -hmm. a good relationship because i don't want and i feel like that's what brings them 
back at the end of the day. And I'm not going to sit here and lie. Like, everybody makes mistakes. You know, everybody. Nobody's perfect. I've made my mistakes. But even with the even if there has been a mistake, and there's always going to be a letter sent, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Even if you do your own on um, whatever website that you use, like, there's always, there, the IRS is always going to send you some kind of notification. Even if, for example, like if you are able to receive the earned income credit, they'll send you a letter saying that you, you're able to qualify for that. Or let's say that you have to apply for a tax personal protection pin. They're going to send you a letter. You know, they're always going to notify you on something. So at the end of the day, I just feel like um, it just depends what kind of relationship you have. And then if you're being honest and, you know, unfortunately, there is uh, tax preparers out there that, you know, they don't have. It just depends, you know, your morals, your principles, mm-hmm. but not everyone has the same mindset. And, you know, there has been, you know, stories of people scamming people, you know, and it just really sucks. But at the end of the day, I just feel like I have a really good relationship with my clientele and I'm really thankful for that. So what exactly happens whenever somebody goes through that? And then, I mean, this is coming from the tax preparer's perspective. Let's say, you know, they're scamming somebody to get more money just to bring that client in. IRS funds out, then what? Okay, so for example, let's see. Let's just, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, let's take the person you said earlier who was like scamming you, like to get the free class, right? Remember you said, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. let's use her for example. Let's just assume she was somebody that was doing that stuff behind your back. I mean, behind the IRS's back, trying to get people to hire refunds and stuff like that. How would you... Was she somebody like that that you could tell might be like that because she was already doing that stuff kind of to you? Mm, well, we worked under the same company and she did bring me in, but I just didn't really vibe with her. I actually vibed more with my mentor. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why, like, you know, because this person did go and open her own office and whatnot, but I stayed with my mentor because I'm like, I love my mentor. Like, I'm really thankful for what she's done for me and she's always there anytime I have a question um she treats us so well so like for me it's like I'm gonna go with the person that you know is teaching me the best qualities that I should have as a person because that's gonna reflect on my business so I never really paid attention to her and you know like I don't want to you know say anything but like it just She's doing something else with her life at the moment, mm-hmm. and I'm really thankful for her that she's doing really good, but it's, it's just that this industry wasn't for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's doing her own thing, and she's very successful at it, but, you know, it just depends on, you know, who you are as a person and how you want to, I don't know, I guess, be and, like, treat people, because, mm-hmm. um, for example, uh, I think it was, like, my first or second year, I actually had a friend who reached out to me. She wanted me to do her taxes. And um, I think it was my first year, actually, my first year. And um, I was getting her a certain amount back. And then she's like, no, like, I'm going to go with someone else because she's giving me a higher one. And I was like, okay, whatever. And um, time passed by. And this year she came to me. She's like, no, girl, like, I actually don't want to even go with that person anymore because I my sister ended up getting audited because she was just adding so many things. We were getting high refunds, but it just... I just don't want to go with her anymore. And, you know, that's when it clicked to me. I'm like, yeah, like sooner or later, people don't. Yes, it's going to it's going to be good while it lasts. But after a while, once you're in the situation like that, and that's with anything in life, like once you're the once you're in a serious situation, you're like, OK, like I don't want I want someone that's actually going to help me, someone that's going to actually like be there for me, that's going to guide me or tell me what is the right thing to do, because it's very easy to you know, be with someone that's going to be like telling you like, hey, do this, do that. And then it doesn't go the right way versus, you know, hanging out with someone that's going to tell you like, hey, like, don't do that. Or, you know. So what would happen to that tax, uh, that tax person if the IRS found out that they were the one falsifying any of the files that they were filing? Well, honestly, I, it's because it's because sometimes that's the thing, like you have clientele or you have clients that they want you to to lie not lie but they want you to like help them get the biggest refund yeah yeah like they want you to like yeah it's not really that you're lying it's just that there's people out there that they're actually like 
they want you to mm-hmm. do that. And me, I'm not about to deal with letters. Yeah. So I automatically like cut that out because I'm like, no, I'm not going to deal. Like, I think last year I had someone tell me, she's like, I need you to do some Pablo Escobar shit on my taxes. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. Like I was just so much, cause there was nothing else we can do. Like there was no more money she could get. And like that day I was so annoyed and I'm like really, really nice. But when I get annoyed, like I cannot hide it like on my face. And I was like, girl, like, like, she didn't want to leave the office. And I'm like, girl, I need to go home. Like, you're doing too much. But, no, there's clients where you have to be like, okay, like, you know what? Like, you need to calm down. Or I think somebody else, like, I think this whole year, this year currently, I probably had, like, probably three people, like, that are just bad crazy. Bad. I mean, not not crazy, but they just want me to, like, go against the law. Yeah, they want me to add all these expenses, and I'm like, hey, like, I just don't think that we should do this because, like, this is too much. Like, you know, they don't care if you're putting, like, they want you to put, like, $50,000 in expenses, and that's not okay, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's not realistic. Yeah, so it has to make sense, so... Yeah, I wanted, but I wanted to touch on. So when you said uh, up to this point, you said you were at 150 files, correct? Was and then earlier you said you were at 65 at one point. Was did you get the 150 over those course of the three years, or was it like you got all a lot of these right now recently? Okay, so my first year I completed 60. So mm-hmm. that was like what I like. That was the amount of files that I uh, tax files that I filed mm-hmm. for the first year. And then yesterday, my mentor, she actually ran the reports and she said that I did a total of 140. Mm-hmm. So that was last up to year. Date. Up to date. No, that was last year. Oh, in 2023? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And then this year, I'm at currently 150. 150 files. Damn, so you doubled that. <laughs> yeah. Goodness, you're around like almost 300 files. Um. Well, no, like right now I'm at 150. I don't know how much. Oh, yeah. but he means total. Oh, total, yeah, total, 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 yeah. Like over the span of your ta- your yeah. tax preparation career. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for yeah. these three years, so you're at like around three hundred. Mm-hmm. So you're saying since this year alone, twenty twenty four, you've done almost one hundred and fifty tax files. That's a lot. Yeah. You, done, <laughs> you just doubled in one year what you did in the past two years, which is insane. That just shows you the tax business is growing for you. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like very, very thankful. I, I really am because I've seen like. I've just seen my life level up in different ways, especially financially. And I'm very, very thankful for that, like forever. And um, this year, my mentor was like, she's like, well, what happened? Like, you just been working like crazy. And I, I just told her, I'm like, I just want I'm just I just want to make sure I'm good. I just want to take make sure that like everything I have enough for what I want as far as like my bills. Um, I just recently purchased a new car for my birthday. Ooh, car. <laughs> so like, I don't know, like making a purchase like that. I remember the first night I couldn't sleep because I was kind of scared. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like, because I was used to paying like a certain amount. And then like with this one, it just kind of like, it was a lot more money. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I can do this, but I think that's what really pushed me to like, mm-hmm. really like, okay, like, you know, Ponte Las Pilas, like, you know, like, you better get it together and, like, you know, you know, start working. And, yeah, like, thankfully, everything's good. And that's my goal. Like, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, I have, like, my bills taken care of and my, yeah, everything. So that way, whatever my next goal is in life, I'll be able to focus on that. And then I could just do my meal preps or if I want to do, like, a part-time or if I want to just I don't know like find a hobby whatever it is I want to do like I just want to live like a how can I say it like a what is it called um when you're in your I just want to live a feminine a soft life mm. you know so like I know it's gonna I'll be able to do that but you just have to put in work and then you know they say that if you work hard then you can like play you know hard. play hard so mm-hmm. I look forward to that. So yeah. Before uh, before I pass it over to David, I just want to ask you this, um, and I'm trying to word it the right way. I think I want to paint you a picture. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, you do meal prepping. You work out consistently. You do taxes. What's next? Because I mean, everybody. I know for me and Dave, for example, we're real serious about this. We're locked in. We want to do something big with this. Where it's 
honestly, the, like this whole thing that we're doing is a lot bigger than us. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm asking myself, what's going to be the next step for you? And do you want to be that kind of Latina that comes out of DFW that breaks ground? Or do you just want to settle for being just comfortable? So <clears throat> I do have a big goal in mind. Um, I just sometimes I OK, so like my next. So me starting taxes really opened the like opened my eyes because honestly, like in school, like I just honestly didn't really care. I'm not going to lie. Like I really didn't care. Like I'll get in trouble for like really stupid things. And I just feel like it was because of things that I would go through, like in my personal life, like at home. So, um, yeah, I just didn't really care. I wouldn't really pay attention. Like my dad, he always wanted me to like have good grades, but like I would not get good grades to, on purpose to get him mad. And it was just like a stage that I would like, I don't know, like I just did it on purpose. You were being reckless. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I really was. And I don't know, like I honestly never thought that honestly, like I never thought that I would like the little girl in me. Like, I'm just so proud. Like, you guys don't understand. Like my dad, he would always talk to me like when I was little in elementary, he would tell me he's like, OK, like, do you want to be the person? He's like, there's nothing wrong with it. And my respects, you know, like I'm not talking down on anyone mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like you could be something today and then tomorrow you could. If you change your mindset, you could be someone else. Like you could be a new person. You just have to want it. And he would tell me, he's like, um, he's like, do you want to be like, like he would tell me in Spanish. He's like, quieres ser una señor que te digan señorita, like, like in a school, like a principal, like you know that everybody like looks up to and respects. Or do you want to be the person who's like, you know, cleaning? Like, like who do you want to be? He's like, I want you to be something else of yourself and that's what he always expected from us and I feel like from me and my brothers like not that I was like the disappointment but I was always like different and you know I have my reasons why but um yeah like I just never saw that I would like I I don't know like everything that I'm accomplishing and I just feel like everything that I went through pushed me to become this person that I am so yes I do have uh, goals for myself and the next thing that I would really love to get myself into is actually real estate. That's something that <clears throat> I would love to study. And that's why I'm working so hard because I want to be able to, you know, once tax season is over, just take like a little mini break. And then, you know, during the spring slash summer, I want to go and start like invest into school. And let's say I'm not and I'm not saying like, oh, I want to talk like that. I want to wish bad upon myself. But let's say if for some reason it doesn't go through how I want it, like how I want it in my mind, at least I'll learn something and I can make connections. And I know that I just want to meet different people who have different mindset mindsets and that they want more in life, just how I want it. And I would really love to get into that uh, field because I see myself and I feel like if I were to get into that, I would be good financially. I feel like I could see myself like, you know, buying my first house or like, you know, when I'm ready to, um, I don't know, like, have a family or whatever. Like, my kids won't have to, like, like I'll be good, you know? But I just feel like um, I have to, like, you know, push myself for, like, a higher education or where I can make more income to be in a better position in yeah, life. Yeah, see, if you, if you did, if nobody, if you didn't tell us what you were doing beforehand, I would assume from the picture, like, if somebody took a picture of you right now, that you were a real estate agent. Just the way you're dressed, because that's how real estate agents dress, you know, more professional and everything like that. So I could see you definitely going into that that kind of atmosphere and stuff. So would it, would it be safe to say in the next five years, your goal is to be a real estate agent? Yes, that's my goal. Um, one of my friends actually really motivated me. Her name is um, Karina. If you guys don't follow her, you guys should because, or you guys should interview her. Like, she's like a, a baddie, like for real. Like, she, I don't know, like, she really motivates me like she's a very hardworking woman and um uh i would just i think for christmas she bought all her clients um christmas presents on and she like shared it on her um story. on her story and i kid you not she at least had 10 presents or more but i don't know we need to ask presents, her though? I'm not sure, but that means that she sold 10 I mean, 10 she got to have some money to be, just be buying presents for all her clients. Right? Well, of course. I mean, well, I think uh, real estate agents, I think they get about 3%. 3%. Uh, 3%. Mm -hmm. And w I mean, with the market nowadays, I mean, what's 3% on 200, 300, nah, 400,000? 300,000, bro. That's already 3, 4K. Just, I'm probably more than that. But yeah, just sitting there. 
on if you sell ten houses, you're already talking about forty k in ten houses. And if you sell them in a month, two months, you're making money. That's she's quick. she's really killing it. Like she has a really good story too. Like she, um, I think she worked selling cars, and then from there she did her real estate, and then now she doesn't. She just does real estate full time, and I look up to her a lot because I'm like, wow, if she was able to do it, like. Why can't I, yeah, why you know, and yeah, like, it's just really inspiring to see that. So, so I want to touch on how did you, or what influenced you to get into bartending? Is that just like another thing you thought about wanting to always do once you had like more freedom or is that something your friend told you and you were like, Hey, maybe I should try that out too. Yeah. Um, so with the bartending, um, basically, um, since I have a passion for food, I don't know, like I'm just so creative in the kitchen. So, um, you know, like during the summer, when it comes to meal prepping, it kind of slows down because everybody's yeah. out having fun. You know, Vacation. everybody's outside, you know. So that's something that I actually wanted to get myself into. Like I wanted to learn how to like make like delicious like cocktails or like, you know, I always I don't know. I just feel like it would just be fun. And like it's a fun way to like, you know, make money because you get to like everybody's like in a happy mood. It just depends on the atmosphere. But most of the time. You know, people are in a good mood and then you're basically, you know, partying with them and then you make money with them, you know, while doing that. So um, I actually told my friend, I'm like, hey, like, I actually want to get into like bartending. Like, that's something that I want to learn how to do and I want to get certified. And then we both decided to take the course. And, you know, one day we were driving back from class and then we just decided to come up with a name and then. You know, that's where poor up Latinas. That's that's my poor up business. Latinas. That's yeah, that's poor up clever. Latinas. I like that. That's clever. Poor yeah. up Latinas. So, are yeah. you like an on the go bartender? Like, we can schedule for like a party or something. Is that is that why you call it on the go Latinas? Yeah. So basically, it's a private mobile poor, bartending. Poor up, sorry, poor up Latinas. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> so it's like a mobile bartending. So you know, like if you have like a wedding, a quinceañera, you need a bartender. Um, you know, we'll go and bartend, but we actually help you create a menu. Um, we offer like our um, like our homemade mixes, and um, we just have different packages. But we've actually bartended at like weddings. Yeras, um, a friend's like grand opening. She opened her salon, her beauty salon, mm -hmm. in the summer. Um, we've done events. Actually, how we started off, we just started hosting our own events, um, and then from there. So yeah, we're yeah. actually going to have a wedding too. Um, so the week of tax season, so the fifteenth, and then on the twentieth we have a a wedding. So oh, really later this month, next month, or oh, okay, next month in April. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that's gonna be cool. I'm excited to go into that. Yeah. So I wanted to ask real quick. I, I know this is a little bit personal, but when, in your mind, when in when did you feel like you wanted to have kids when you were younger, and then now, when do you feel like you would want to have kids? Because you haven't yet, obviously. So when has has that crossed your mind? So, you know, what's funny. Um, I don't know. I, honestly, I never really wanted to have kids because um, this is like, OK, so growing up, my mom, she was a single mom until I was the age of three. So, you know, like my dad, I mean, I call him my dad, but he's not really like my mm -hmm. biological dad. So I don't know, like. I don't know, I guess it's I just don't like. I know that life happens, but I just don't want to go through what my mom went through, you know? Mm, so you're scared. Yeah, like, I never want to be, like, a single mom. Or, like, if I ever get to the point where I want to get serious with someone. Even when I was with my ex-husband, like, I remember he wanted kids, but I didn't want kids. Because, like, mm. I wanted us to have, like, our life together first. I'm like, hey, like, I want us to, like, have X, Y, and Z, and then maybe we can start a family. But it was never in my mind, like, okay, first, not that there's anything wrong, you know, with kids I'm actually a thea like I love my niece to death like you know a lot of my friends are moms and maybe now that I'm older maybe if I would have had a kid when I was younger maybe it wouldn't have been too bad because you know like now maybe they would be a little bit older but now that I'm 28 I really think about it because it's like okay like um I have so many things going on for myself and then like 
to have a baby like it doesn't stop you but you know you do have to you know prioritize you know your baby and like your life does change and i do see that and the reason why i know that is because i would nanny Mm -hmm. so i i know i know how that is and i i've seen it especially with you know the parents that i've worked with and whatnot but i mean right now it's like either way there's no one i would even you know have a family with but i feel like it also goes back to like you know like my mom like i feel like just seeing that and i mean i I mean obviously i was little but still like she would tell me and then she always had that drilled in my head like hey make sure you go to school like make sure you you know um you just need to make sure you're successful and then you can have a family. So I don't know, like, that's just something that's always really been embedded into me. And then also my family, I don't know, like, a lot of my cousins didn't really have, like, babies at a young age. I don't know, it's just not, it really wasn't, like, really like that in the family. So I guess it just, it was just normal for me to, like, have a baby later, I guess. It's funny you said it, too, because you're saying in your family, nobody was really having kids like that. And I think in everybody else's family, everybody was having kids at that time, especially back in, like, high school and everything. It was just, like, kids are popping out left and right. So that makes sense. I would say that it's really important, and I tell a lot of women this, the same thing that your mom was telling you, is that you should really be okay by yourself and happy by yourself before you get with the man so that you're not relying on him for your happiness or for uh, the bills to get paid or whatever the case is. So whenever you meet a man, it's a lot easier to say, hey, you bring this to the table. I bring to this, to this to the table. Let's build together instead of, OK, you, you let's just just pay all my bills and I'll just wait behind you and you run everything. And that's like the worst case scenario, because say y'all ever break up and you bring it back to your mom, you almost have no place to go. You were reli- you were so reliant on this person. And it didn't work out. Now, what are you left with? You should always just be content with yourself before you, you know, put yourself in that position. So I can see with you, you have a good head on your shoulders <clears throat> by your mom telling you these things and just preparing you mentally for that time to come later on. So is there an ideal goal from like right now at 28 that you would even think like, let's just hypothetically say if you could plan it out and it would go directly down that way. At what age do you think that you would be ready to have a kid, hypothetically speaking? And you know what's crazy? I do want to agree with you on that. Um, I just feel like I've definitely gone through a process. And I just feel like this, and it's so, so, so crazy. But I just feel like at this point in my life, from like my early 20s, um, I don't know. Like, I just feel like for the first time in my life, I'm okay with being alone. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Like, it took a, a long time because people don't realize that, you know, going through like a divorce or going through anything like that is really hard even. And then I feel like it took me so long because like for me, like things happen in life and then I would just be like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't really pay attention to it or I'll kind of like just push it under the rug or like I just didn't. I feel like that would kind of like my pains would like fuel me to like, um, I guess, work or I don't know, like. I just would be so busy that I wouldn't even pay attention, which is okay to a certain extent. But whenever you go through something, it's really good to like address it, to not just like leave it like simmering there or anything, because either way, sooner or later, you have to confront it and you're not going to be able to like move forward until you do. So I feel like it took me a while and I feel like this is the first year where I'm okay. Like, I don't really care about and I'm not going to sit here and say like, I don't date. Yes, I do. And like, who doesn't want to like, you know, you know, be with someone or like, you know, have a little boo here and there. But like, I was always meeting the wrong boos or they would just be crazy or I don't know, like, I literally like my life is like a novella, but (laughs) I'm serious. But I was just like, you know what, like, this is the first year where I really don't care. Like, I'm not really looking for that. Like, I've like accepted like, okay, like, you know what, like, let me work on me. Like, and I'm not saying that it solves all your problems but recently I started going to church and it's been helping me me fix stuff that I had to fix from you know like my childhood Mm -hmm. and like have a better relationship with my parents and um I feel like that's what I'm focusing on so going back to having kids is not really in my mind right now because I need to go fix you know yourself first basically yeah like I want to meet like my biological dad like I've never met him like Mm -hmm. You know how I said I'm half Salvadorian? Mm-hmm. My my stepdad, who I call my dad, he's Peruvian. So I grew up in a Peru, 
Peruvian culture. Like I know the Peruvian culture, the Mexican culture, but I don't know anything about Salvadorian, El Salvadorian culture other than pupusas. Literally, like that's how like I didn't even know that was from Salvador. Yeah, <laughs> or I mean, they're from different from Central America, but you know, like I really want to like dive deep deep into that because I know that that like I'm such a um, and that's another thing that I do want to agree with you when it comes to you know um, you know relying on a man to do everything. Yes, I do believe that women should be in their femininity, but at the same time, it's like whenever you meet someone and you care about them so much, like your partner, like I, the way I see it is that you guys should be a team. Mm -hmm. You know, like you guys are supposed to help each other out. You know, like for me, like when I care for someone or like my man's, you know, or my little boo, like, you know, I want to, what can I do to make them feel better or cause I'm happy, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to be doing X, Y, and Z or like cooking for you. Or I don't know, I'm going to do something to show you that you're loved, but I also want you to, you know, show me that I'm loved. Like the type of woman that I am and the way I am, I don't ex like, yeah, it would be nice to, you know, have someone like, you know, who doesn't want to be spoiled. But at the same time, I don't really expect that because like I take care of myself, you know, like, I don't know, like that's kind of scary to me. Like, at the same time, like meeting someone and then I don't know, like that's something that I would have to work on. But I just feel like whatever partner you have, you guys are supposed to balance each other out. Like they're mm -hmm. supposed to bring you peace. Like you should be happy. Um, I don't know if they need help with anything. They should have your back. Like they're your best friends. Like they should be your 100, like your support team. Like that's the way I see it. And um, that's what I want to have one day. Like my best friend, like you know, whatever it is that I go through, like, you have my back type thing, and I feel like in order for me to have that, I really need to, like, you know, figure myself out, and, mm -hmm. you know, like, just, I don't know, like, that's something that I want to focus on. Yeah, right I would now. think that's the hardest part for, so Roger's been in relationships, so he can't really relate to us to an extent. I know he can, but, like, where we're at right now in our lives as being single for so long, he's been in a relationship for many years now, so it's a lot different for Roger. Yeah, oh, wow six years and oh, so wow. yeah and i think the most important to that whole thing is what you said is being content with being alone because the sooner you can accept with being alone and not needing somebody to be there is the sooner you can start checking off the boxes of your boundaries of what you're willing to and not willing to accept and I, the way the best way i can explain this whole scenario just for everybody to understand is when, let's just go with the idea of you getting out of a relationship when you get out of a relationship let's call it three years when you get out of it, there's this line. And once the relationship's over, there's this void in the middle that's missing. That was that person. The best way to do it is to focus on yourself, figure out what you need to do so that that indention goes to become level with the rest of your life. What we like to do is once we break up with somebody, we'll find that replacement and put something else in that void and not heal from the previous replacement you know what i'm saying we all do that i've i know i've done it many times and that's the mistake we we continuously make and then until you can say you know what i have to take the reflection and not fill that void i need to be alone i need to be content with being alone that's where i realized that that's where i've started to grow and putting myself before anybody else's needs and it sounds so selfish but it's really not because if you can be um up front with somebody from the beginning then you can eliminate a lot of the situations that arise after that. So like if you get with a, a, a guy and you go on a date with him and you say, hey, uh, I'm only really to, willing to date if we're going to maybe go and make this serious. Then you, off the bat, you would know if this guy is really willing to take you serious or is he just looking for a hookup off the bat. So you're giving him up front what, it, what, it, what your expectations are. And then you can know right there off the bat if it's a red flag or a green flag. Oh, you know, that sounds cool to me. And then, you know, that already is maybe like a red flag because you're like, oh, you're too, you're too accept, accepting of that, what I want. And then you start maybe putting some tests out there to see if that's really what they want as a relationship from you. So I think to go back to your point on that is I think it's very important to be alone, be content with being alone, because if you're searching, you're never going to find it. And if you're not searching, that's when the blessings just come. And that that's what I realized is the best thing. It's funny, we, uh, I had reposted this on Facebook where I had said, sometimes you have to give up something that's good to get something that's great. And I had said that in 2012 and it pops up now. And I'm just like, gosh, that resonates with my life so big right now because I'm literally 
giving up something that was good and I know what's great is me just focusing on myself. So just to tie back to that, it's actually a really good point. No. Oh, and, oh I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, and that is true. Like a lot of the times, like have you ever have you ever experienced like um like right person wrong time? Yes. Or what is that the saying? Yeah, it's right wrong wrong right person wrong time. Yes, yeah. Exactly and then sometimes is. like once you grow and like you spend time by yourself and then you actually start loving yourself, it's like Things that you used to put up with in the past is like, okay, like, we're not going to do this Mm -hmm. anymore. Like, yeah, it kind of, it's like, sometimes you do sound like, okay, like, you know, your expectations are like too much, but it's like, it's better to have that than, Mm -hmm. you know, allow everybody into your life. Because when you work on yourself, not everyone should have access to you Mm -hmm. because not everyone is like, everybody goes through different things in life, you know? And it's just not fair that you're here working on yourself, you know, you're, you know, going to the gym or you're you're feeding yourself like mentally, financially, emotionally and all the areas in life. And then, you know, you're letting someone in like we're not here to fix people. Mm-hmm. And it, it sucks because most like I said, like, yes, you should whoever you meet should compliment like y'all should compliment each other. But while you're in your healing journey or spending time by yourself, like you can't you can't like you're working your full attention should be on yourself and you can't, you just don't have it in you to like fix someone else. And that's something that I've seen like growth in me, me wise, because back then, like I'm telling you like, I, and then it's just the type of person that I am, you know, like I'm such a like giving and like, um, caring person. Yeah. So it's like, I want to fix you. But like now, like it's so now I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like, you know, it'll be nice to have the company of someone. But then after a while, I'm like, you know what, like this is just not going to work out. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what? I, can't focus on this right now because I have to focus on this. So. Dang, you made me. I literally had what I was about to say with that too. It was the perfect scenario. You, I think what I was gonna say. Well, this is where it was at. Is you? How can you love somebody else if you can't love yourself first? And that might have been. I don't know. I don't know the, all the details. If we're talking about the same person it was back then, that might have been the scenario where how can you fully put all yourself into this relationship, even with it being toxic or whatever, when you don't even love yourself yet. And I think that was my mistake too back then in the past was just giving so much love and I'm a caring person as well. I'm a cancer. So we're like emotional oh, yeah. caring and stuff. You have so, your heart on yeah, it's literally on our shoulders. So I feel like, feel like cancers are easy to read to an extent, but yeah, I feel like I was very um, selfish back then on what I wanted instead of while I was in a relationship, instead of saying, Hey, you know what? I need to just, focus more on myself and make myself happy before I can even treat a woman the right way she needs to be treated. Cause I know at that time I wasn't doing the best of my ability. We're all young. We're all making mistakes. I feel like now I've honed in more on what I need to do as a man. And that's why I feel like for me taking more time for myself just to prepare for that situation when it arises and not searching for it, but just allowing it to flow into my life. And if I, if there's nothing there blocking it, the blessings will just show up, which is what I hope hopefully. Wow, that's very beautiful, you guys. <laughs> that is very beautiful to hear from two single people. Um, with that being said, uh, I want to go ahead and just go ahead and wrap this up since we're going a little over on time. But before we do, I want to give you a special spot to go ahead and shout out anybody, maybe businesses. companies, businesses, IGs, all that in there. And they're right here. In the right in the purple phone. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I don't remember the names, um, but... You guys can go ahead and follow my meal prep page. It's Meals by Itself. And then we have my bartending, which is what I, um, well, me and my best friend do. It's called Pour Up Latinas. And then um, you guys can follow me on my personal page, which is Oh My Itself. Um, I like to share different, you know, things like, you know, like memes or sometimes I'll show, I'll like share like quotes that I see or like whatever I do. Um and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and then y'all can just check out my page and then y'all see, like, my Snapchat or my <laughs> TikTok. Because on Snapchat, I blog a lot. Like, whatever I do throughout my day, like, I literally, oops, my bad, sorry. Um, I literally just post, like, random things that I do. And a lot of my friends tell me that they like to see my snaps because they're funny. So, yeah. I want to go ahead and thank you for coming on to the show today and joining us. And having a direct discussion with us. Yeah, literally a yes, thank discussion. y'all for having me. <laughs> uh, also, a Roger is gonna plug all in it, all that stuff in at the bottom. I, we just wanted you to. Ah, okay, okay. We're gonna plug yeah, all like, that I don't in and everything like that. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, taking your time out of your day, and I know you're really busy, and it's actually really good to see, and because I I've known you from high school in those situations, so so it's really good 
to know that you've grown from those situations and you're trying to go because I'm on the same journey just trying to go. So I take a lot of appreciation in people that are actually trying to and willing to grow because it takes a lot to say, hey, everything I'm doing is not the correct way. I actually need to make some adjustments. And a lot of people are narcissistic and are like, no, my way is the highway. I mean, my way is the right way. I don't care what you say. So I really take a lot of pleasure in seeing you grow and tell your story and everything. And it's all, it actually takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable to everybody and just let your story be out there. So I really appreciate you for coming on. Yes, thank y'all for having me. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, click the bio, link trees, all that good stuff. You're know where it's at. We're going to keep mentioning it until we hit our 500 subscribers. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to keep mentioning it some more. So make sure you like, subscribe, follow it so on all of our Instagram, socials, whatnot, whatnot. You know what to do. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. See you next time. Appreciate it, guys. David doesn't like me saying keep it saucy. He makes a face. So I want to say it one more time. You keep it saucy. <laughs>